Shane Retty's revealed how he intends to meet the ambitious health targets laid out in March with the focus on standardizing care and improving infrastructure. First, a reminder of the targets. Faster cancer treatment, improved immunization for kids, shorter emergency department stays, and shorter wait times for specialist appointments and elective treatments. For example, right now, 61% of patients are seen within four months. The aim by 2030, to get that up to 95%. No complaints, yeah? If they can do it and it's genuine and they're not fudging the numbers, who would complain about on, the target? On face value. Yes. Yeah, of course. On face value. And look, Chewy, um, hopefully, because I was doing three things at once, you'll remember well what Craig said about what they did in the UK for those numbers. Mm. We'll make sure we mention that again now, because if this becomes a clip in, in and of itself, it's a good bit of a warning for uh, other people to hear. We'll keep going. The fixes include developing national standards, so there's less variation in access to care, mm. having targeted immunisation for priority populations, Improving patient flow through hospitals by standardizing hospital operations and establishing short... Do you know what's hilarious? They talk about targeted immunization uh, for vulnerable people, you know, for, for targeted communities. They'll never say for Māori, even though the ones that will be targeted will be Māori, because they're the people who are at the bottom of the health stats outputs. So they're going to use um, what they think is more gener generic -y terms, you know, vulnerable people, people who need it, yada, yada, and it'll be for Māori. But if they said for Māori, of course, then they'd be hypocritical. But that's what it'll end up being because those are the, the that is the people group that need them most of all, that fall away most of all. But they'll never say that all that joy. Ever. No. Ever. Short stay units and discharge lounges and enabling more primary care in the community, such as virtual health care and options for GPs other than directing the patient. Virtual. Yeah, I think we're all going to get we're all going to get VR headsets, bro. I'm I'm down for that. It'll be cool. Get some virtual health care. Go into you put your VR headset on, and they'll just like they'll they'll show you that your cancer is melting away, and you'll see it, and so everything will be okay. Yeah, sounds good. I'm down for that. And then we can play uh, Crash Bandicoot in VR once we finish with with Judith Collins uh, promoting that there's going to be some sort of government version of Chat GPT. Just get rid of the GPs. You yeah, just perfect. jump on a Zoom call with an AI and it'll either work out that you've got super AIDS or it'll go, <laughs> no, you're fine. Go back to work. Who who cares? Who cares? He just said super AIDS. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, super AIDS. It doesn't exist. Good. It doesn't exist. But an AI might think it, it exists if I mention it enough. Mm. It'll come up with super AIDS. All right, back to the uh, the Silver Fox. Oh, better push play, I guess. The hospital. Kushla Norman has more. I've never been in that much pain in all my life. For Lindley, it was acute. Yeah, look, let's just say again before the starts. I mean, if these can happen and they're genuine and they're not fudging anything, man, I'm for it. People always talk about when our our, our partisanness, and we are like we're honest about it. But I would support the government reaching these targets. Would they be accurate, truthful, and not fudged? I mean, because mm. it would mean people seeing their doctors, their GPs, their emergencies uh, sooner. However, as I've said a dozen times before, I don't trust these guys. And I get the sense that there could be a bit of tomfoolery, tomfudgery going on for them to actually make these happen. But as Chewy said before, top line, awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. Appendicitis. It's covered in blood and dirt. And like literally holding my chin in place. For Hulan, it was a bike accident. It's heartbreaking when you see your mother in so much pain. And Karina's mother broke her hip. Three cases of Yikes. long waits, delays and deferrals in the health system. It's been pretty bad. Um, I honestly thought the health system would just let me die. It became three hours and then five hours and then literally at 10 p.m., so after 10 hours, um, I was just like, this is crazy. It feels like you're waiting in a queue at the airport when there's like, you know, 30 international flights ready to go out the gate. The health minister's confident his targets can make the system run better. These are ambitious targets. And what I've said before is that a number of these targets were hard for the previous government. You know, they're going to be hard for me too. Today, details for how the targets will be met, including growing the workforce and hospital beds. Yeah, see, this is where they start to lose me a bit because we already don't have enough nurses, we already don't have enough doctors, we already don't have enough beds, and they're cutting and chopping and slicing budgets. So how do they grow something 
i.e. number of people working, whilst cutting budgets for the number of people working. So that's why I say top line, great, let's do it. Now show us your workings, feeling more difficult to do this. You know? They've Should just we? scared the shit. Like this this year, they've just scared the shit out of anybody that's thinking of nursing as a career. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, even yeah, offering that, jobs and then recanting those offers. Often. Uh, and, and often, like yes, the staffing issues are, are a big part of the wait lists in emergency uh, departments and that sort of thing. Yeah, but let's also recognise that a lot of people go to emergency for things that they should see their GP for. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what it's like for for the rest of the chat around New Zealand for getting a a GP appointment, but my GP's wait list is two weeks to get seen. So if you're you're in in pain, you've got a choice there of an after-hours doctor that can see you Mm -hmm. quicker, Mm -hmm. but do you have the money for that? in a student town or do you go to a and e yeah and 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 i don't see any recognition of the pressures that gps are under and into this and then i can also see a shortcut of like well we'll just farm off more to the private providers Mm. to to, so those guys are going to be making more money out of the government as well like this this you know, why, why are we so hard on this government? I would say it's because of their words and actions. <laughs> it's the main reason. Like, historically, like you said, Pat, we don't trust them. Yeah, it's true. That because of their words and actions. It's yes. because of the things that they've done in the past. It's yes. because of the conflicts of interest that they all seem to have. Mm-hmm. That's why we're biased. Because they just keep proving us right. Yeah. If if they're proven to be the foxes in the hen house, which is what you think about when you've got tobacco lobbyists making decisions around tobacco and you've got firearms lobbyists making, you know, rules around uh firearms laws in New Zealand. Uh so when it when it feels like the the fox is in the hen house, when the fox goes, Hey, here's another idea of how I'm not gonna take your chickens or your eggs, you kind of go, meh. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, Foxy Loxy. All right, we'll keep going. Letting more clinical staff vaccinate like midwives and pharmacists, making more care like cancer treatment available in communities, allowing discharges from hospital seven days a week and creating short-stay units. So can we free up that bed and take you to a discharge lounge or transit lounge where the house surgeon or the discharging team can then help you from there? That, and we know that's very effective. The health minister couldn't say how much the plan will cost, but it will come out of the existing budget. You can't have a plan yeah. if you don't have people in rest- well, Can we also say, coming? so remember they've said growing the workforce out of the existing budget, which yes has increased from last year, but not enough, not enough to keep up with inflation, which means you've actually got in real terms less money than last year. That's the budget within the budget and you're going to grow the workforce. Uh, as Craig Rennie just said, what did he say? 40, 40 nurses down in some small hospital somewhere in New Zealand? I missed what he said. But they're 40 nurses short. I mean, 40 nurses, 100k each, that's for one small hospital, or 80k each, whatever they get paid. But the budget has shrunk proportionally due to not keeping up with inflation. This is where the bullshit nerve starts going at the back of my head. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? but it will come out of the existing budget. You can't have a plan if you don't have people and resources. And sadly, what this is looking at is about wait lists, access and flow through the health system. Doesn't look at what are the barriers, the blockages and the problems right now. Labor says the plan repackages existing work without the funding. And so just concerned that there'll be cooking of the books or gamification to make it look like they've been achieved. So, Chewy, can you remind me, sorry, I did miss it because I've got seven things going on, what Craig said about cooking of the books. He was uh, referring to the NHS, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, the government put down uh, a promise that you would be seen within 48 hours by a GP. 
Yep. Um, and the way that they achieved that is they made it impossible to make a booking more than 48 hours ahead. Right. So they basically cut the calendar off at 48 mm. hours. So therefore it was impossible to go beyond that. So it was a little bit like, do you remember during COVID at the at the peak of lock, lockdowns, everyone would be on their computer at midnight just waiting for the supermarket to roll over and all go to try and get in for the next day because you couldn't book it out more than a day or a couple of days in advance. So it's that sort of thing. So, yep, they hit their targets, but they hit their targets because tons of people weren't being serviced because they only had a booking system that lasted 48 hours. So, yes, it's accurate. Everyone who booked got seen within 48 hours. And then 80% of the people just missed out and had to do the midnight rush, I'm assuming. So there you go. There's an example of fudging the box. The Minister says there will be monitoring to make sure under pressure staff don't manipulate the system to make it look like they're meeting the targets. Kushla Norman, One News. All right. So, Chewy, there's the, the story around that. Um, yeah, it just, it's this thing, and, and we've said this before. And look, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit um, generous to the government. But in the past, we've said, be wary of these these words they use, which sound lovely, like, let's all be equal. It sounds great. What's the nefarious actions behind it? Not so much. And that's why the bullshit nerve goes off. And that's why we, we have evidence to not trust them, right? We have evidence. We're not just being assholes. We have evidence from this term as to how they've fallen short time and time and time again. And so um, be wary of the target sounding so good because that's what's behind them, like all the other ones, that'll will 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 prove it. You know, the proof of it will be in the in the actual outcomes that they get and how they do it. Actually, yeah, absolutely. And and look, I th I think the overall aim here is is what the Tories did in the UK, which was to absolutely gut the NHS uh, to the point where they could go see the public health care doesn't work. Yeah. Um, in, in the government's not good at, at providing health care, but these uh, mega rich entities uh, are mega rich because they're really good at doing it. Um, and we end up with something like they have in the States where the, the US government spends more on health care per person yep. than, than any other country. For worse and outcomes. gets less for it. They have they have a huge disparity. Some people yeah. can get absolutely fucking best in the world, top notch healthcare, if you have the money. But the private hospitals are, are, are raking it in. The insurance companies are raking it in, and the only people that are dying are the poor. So yeah. the system works. Well, that's the perfect the perfect um, way the Americans. Americans say we have the best medical system in the world, the best, you know, best med uh, best doctors, best surgeons in the world, and you know they 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 pretty much can make that claim. I mean, I know that when athletes like I think it was Dame Valerie Adams when she got injured, she went to Switzerland. So it's, it's not every best surgeon in the world, but I think it's a pretty fair claim across the board. They have the the best quality healthcare in the world, but what they always leave out from that situation is if you can afford it. That, that's the part of the situation that they leave out. And they're like, well, why do people from Canada come and see our surgeons? Why do people from Europe come and see our surgeons? Because they're wealthy and they can afford the best. And in America, the best surgeons gravitate there because they earn 10 times what they do in any other country. So, yeah, there may be the best surgeons and the best doctors in the world, not the best uh, health system, but you always have to have that little add-on if you can afford it. And, and, and look, that's what they don't. There's there's already cooking of the books going on. There's already moving of the goalposts. Um, one of the stories today, uh, Amy in the chat is, is mentioning it, the story about uh, Reti changing the thresholds uh, for the different codes in hospital. Code black no longer exists and code red went from being over 120% capacity to uh, over 135, right. shifting the goalposts. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, so oh, look, uh, well, the, the, the code blacks are, are really, they're well down under our government. We're doing good. No, you yeah. just fucking deleted it. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that's, that's a really good point. I mean, I'm, I'm under code black at the moment with my camera, but, um, but you're <laughs> right. They'll be able to say, you know, there was a thousand code blacks a year under, under labor. Look, we've had none. The code blacks mm. still exist. No. Okay.